No sound the whole time. That's called <laughs> professional. What's going on, everyone? My name is Seth Miranda. Welcome to this panel. I got to do my whole thing over again. Not for nothing. I just fixed a thousand tech problems before we went live. So if that's where I got lost, then that's where it goes. We're beaming to you from 42 West 18th Street, right above the Adorama flagship store in New York itself. And I brought together some Nikon powers that be. I've got Jade Alakinja. Alak Alakinja. <laughs> I had it right all the time. Jade Alakinja. <laughs> That's correct. There we go. Mark <laughs> Cruz, who I'm sure you guys are sick of with this launch because he's been all over Nikon's media, but for good reason, because he has so much knowledge for Nikon, it's <laughs> ridiculous. And if I ever have any questions about what's going on in the cameras, that's the guy I talk to. And we've got the talented Christy Odom with us as well, which we had for the Nikon Z9 launch. Uh, she filmed a lot of tiny little mice with that camera, but now... Uh, we're talking about the Z8, where you did a lot more uh, work with both cameras. So I'm curious to see where you stand on both of them. I really love Jade's portrait work. His street work is oh, really yeah, incredible you. to me. A lot of heavy, I kept saying it has this heavy weight because you actually feel like it's in front of you when you're looking at it. And I don't scroll past it so quick. He has a really amazing sense for tones and portraits. So we have a lot of varied styles, a lot of varied applications and a lot of varied philosophies as to why the camera, which camera, and how you guys approach things. So we have the Nikon Z8 in front of us. You guys all in this chat have been really crazy with rumors for two years, <laughs> wondering what this thing was, <laughs> when it was going to come. We have a mini flagship here. How do you guys feel about what it came out to be? Are you excited about what you've been doing with it? Tell me, tell me. Let's start with, with Jade. I mean, what can I say? This, this, is, this definitely has been the camera I've been waiting for. Um, I've been using the Z9 for some time now, and uh, when this actually, when I got to sort of play around with it, this is exactly everything. Um, you can use it for literally what you can, right? but you can also do other things that you know it's so discreet, so light, so small. It's absolutely great. Yeah, I think that's kind of what it was crazy. We were waiting for this build up of this launch, and no offense, Mark, but we were just basically like, yeah, it's a, it's a Z9. That was like the whole summary <laughs> of like what the camera type is like. It's a smaller Z9. You want to pull that mic a little closer to you? When you, yeah, and that's so, a fair description. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> really, it makes things easier. If you guys have any question in the chat, that's the whole point of this panel. We want you guys to be able to ask what you've been trying to ask in all those comments in those forums to people that actually have used and actually have knowledge on what this camera's philosophy was about. I want to talk to Christy though, real quick, because your your images that you dropped were like. I want like like one in a million when this camera came out. At the, she shot the Northern Lights, guys. Like, like can we talk about this? <laughs> I'm gonna pull this up while you talk about it. Oh my goodness, I got super lucky because I have never seen the Northern Lights like ever. And I was out um, in Yellowstone, and I got this text right when I got out saying happening tonight. And it had all these. My guide had all these pictures of of you know what was gonna happen. And I'm going, oh my gosh. And I was out there with Nikon, and Jeff handed me an eight and was like, go shoot it. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> So we went out and, you know, to be honest, I'd never even seen the Northern Lights. So I didn't know a lot about how to photograph or anything like that. I had this brand new camera that, you know, I, it wasn't mine. I hadn't set it up and it has these illuminated buttons. So I was able to like see in the dark and set it all up. And there's a, a starlight view and I was able to use that. And, and, you know, it was my first time experiencing it. And like to get pictures of the Northern Light on an iconic um, landscape that's in the lower 48, I was really excited because, yeah. Um, and these are eight second long exposures. Yeah, they're long exposures. And it pushed the camera to like high ISOs. I think the first shot might have been at ISO 8000. And that last shot with the town of Gardner, if you go to the right, that's the zoomed in shot. So even at, I think that one was at ISO 2000. But to get the colors and to also get that detail, in a small body like this eight, it was, I was really excited because it really showed all the colors that came out on the sensor and all the colors in the sky. And I like seeing the thermals and how the colors came out in the thermals with the Northern lights. So it was a, a pretty good test on, you know, really pushing that camera. And to be clear, this shot, this is the lower left corner over here. So this is the detail of the town from this shot from the lower left corner. Like that's to give you an idea of what, what the capability and the range on this camera was. Um, which by the way, can you imagine like a major flagship camera comes out and then this monumental <laughs> like galactic <laughs> event happens. Like you couldn't have asked for anything better than that. Go for it. It did. It, she summoned mother nature. Oh my goodness. Well, I see that great question. Why would you prefer the eight over the nine or vice versa? And I think that there's a lot of reasons 
for one or the other. I mean, is that okay for me to yeah, go acknowledge for it. No, some of these do questions? It. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Because <laughs> for me, being a wildlife photographer and filmmaker, I'm a hybrid shooter. I like going back and forth from photo to video. And this little eight can do, you know, um, in raw, 60 frames per second, 8K. Like it can have all of that in a smaller body. Can't do it for as long as the nine, which is one of the reasons that people would want the nine. But holding the camera for long periods of time and trying to oh. stabilize and also hiking and getting to locations to have all the functionality in my nine and an eight is exactly what I need when I'm going out to remote locations. You know, if I'm doing longer shooting, I might want to use a nine. So that's that's my kind of comparison. The size is everything in a lot of cases. Yeah. How about yeah. you? Yeah, I would definitely say size, um, size, weight, um, and then budget as well. It's, you know. It, it, it's a lot more affordable, um, especially for wedding photographers who are sometimes on a budget. Um, they can, they can definitely, this will definitely meet their pockets. I also like the fact that it has, you know, the SD card capability in there as well. You can use yeah. SD cards with this. With the nine, you're always going to be using CF Express, which is an amazing card, by the way. You know, an amazing media device, uh, medium. Um, but it's also expensive as well. Um, so I like the fact that uh, Nikon um, kept that feature, the fact that you can also use that. But size for me, um, I'm a street photographer as well. And um, I have been looking for, I mean, I've always wanted a camera that is really, really robust, uh, produces the same, well, similar quality to the Z9. But at the same time, with the size of, say, the D780 or the 850, and this camera is def it ticks all those boxes. So that's another reason why. Can, can I ask you something for a true photography? Is, it, is the, the smaller body, the discretion of the body a concern? Yeah. Like, so is that something with the 9 that was like, oh, there's a big camera in my hand? The moment you stick the 9 out and say a scene <laughs> like that, everyone thinks you're working for some massive publication and you're out there to make some money. Um, um, which is not a bad thing, by the way. But what I'm saying is sometimes you just really just want to take a really nice photograph. And you don't want something that screams out paparazzi. You want yeah. something that is very, very discreet. I can put this on my lap, lift the screen out, and it doesn't look like a very, very sort of, you know, it's not like a professional, professional camera, something you would see on the size of a football pitch, for instance. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, when you're doing street photography, the question is, are you a participant or are you an observer? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's kind of where this kind of comes from. So that's really interesting. I mean, do you have any comment on that from a technical aspect of it, Mark? Like, is there something between the two that you would talk about? Uh, in terms of size wise? Or no, just like Z9, Z8, oh, okay. why go one or the other? Yeah. Uh, I know that it'll probably people are thinking the exact same thing. Uh, in terms of duration, okay, so I'll just make a, a couple of main differences between the two. So the Z9 uses two compact flash, uh, compact flash, CF Express cards. So uh, this uh, Z8 is a CF Express and NSD. So there is uh, same cards that you're using in the Z9. Z9 has double the battery power. So when you're, you know, Chrissy was talking about underwater photography and all these other applications that you might have to have longer battery power if you're doing video production. Sometimes the Z8 is better because you don't change the battery. I see a question up there about the grip for the Z8. There is an optional battery grip. There's an MB, uh, MBN12 for this. It'll take two ENEL 15C batteries. Uh, it'll approximately be double the, the time. So it'll equal, say, a ENEL 18 battery on the Z9. But the thing is, the question is asking, will it take the Z9 battery? At this point, the answer is no. There is no uh, holder for it to insert in. It, You're just it, going to use it. It doesn't physically fit. <clears throat> the the, the battery is actually wider than the grip what, itself. Right. Yes. So it actually doesn't physically fit. Um, one thing I did find interesting about the, the grip, though, you load in two batteries and you can make it a dual charger. You can just plug the grip in by itself, have a battery in the camera, go use it. And you have kind of a dual charger just by having the grip. It was kind of an interesting. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool because that's a USB-C port on the grip. So it's kind of that's been... that's worth mentioning because that's the first time I've actually seen that happen. So the grip alone is a charging bay. Mm. So you can remove it from the camera and then, like Seth said, take pictures with the camera oh and then just leave your your battery in there and charge it. Yeah, uh, right, right. 
Uh, what video formats can you record with the Z8 to the SD card? So every, oh, to the SD card. Yeah, there's no difference in terms of the SD card. Okay, so there's no difference. I feel like I have a UFC match. Here. I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, this there is good. Go. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I need the black eyes afterwards. Okay. <laughs> so um, I need to perspire. So uh, uh, you can, there's no difference. Um, the difference is, is you ideally want to use the CF Express card to shoot in 8K RAW and stuff like that because the CF Express card has a longer sustain write speed. So uh, ideally you don't wanna use the SD card when you're shooting those high frame rates and high resolutions. You wanna use the CF Express card. There's also a new option in the Z8 and the Z9 with the firmware update for a full format of the CF Express card. The CF Express card allows for a full format. And the reason we invoked that feature in there was to really clean up the card, uh, give you the best chance of writing and not skipping any frames or, 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 or interrupting recording. So I encourage you, if you have the Z8 or the Z9, to use the full format function on your CF Express cards before you start writing those crazy resolutions like 8K RAW. But technically, you can still write those to the SD card, but I encourage you to use the CF Express card. Speaking of 8K RAW, You've been using AK Raw. A little bit, yes. Okay. Do you want to talk anything about the file, what you've seen in it? Do you, oh you... my gosh, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's I don't She's know. Bias, can you tell? It's <laughs> it's funny because it's like uh, you know, to be able to see that on your computer back home and to see all these colors come out, like it's it just makes nature, it celebrates it and it's all its glory. So it's been it's been really nice. But I'm I am a big junkie of the 120 frames per second. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't shoot in raw as much because it doesn't support 120 frames per second in raw, only um, 60 frames per second in, in raw. I always look at friend Mark and oh, right. oh, oh. he can correct me if I'm wrong here. But um, so I, I only use in raw when I'm shooting at 60 frames per second and not 120. So I'm not using it all the time, but when I do have a trickier kind of subject or something where I really want to enhance the colors or I've seen some amazing work underwater with using in raw and I'm, I'm excited to kind of pull this camera or, or the Z9, that might be a better thing for the Z9, but I'm excited to start playing around with in, in raw and underwater photography. You know, I have good news for you because <laughs> okay. we can do 120. And no. Yes. Wait, wait, yes, wait, 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 so, so there's no 4K way. 120 on the NRAW um, capabilities, so is that amazing? Wait, what? Since when? <laughs> I even said this uh, Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, since, since the, even the, the Z9. What? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Shows you how much I've been using it, but <laughs> not. Yeah, so there is a 4K 120. Actually, you can show it in here um, and I can actually pull it there you up. There go. Yeah. Pull, pull it up. Here. Go ahead. Okay. How have I missed this? I feel embarrassed no, right no, now. Don't feel There's embarrassed. No feel happy for humanity <laughs> that we have this feature. So I'm going to pull up on the menu right here. So guys, oh, uh, hit wait. that switch or that hot switch. That... It's not coming up. Hang on. It's not coming up. It's a loose cord. Wait a sec. I noticed the skin softening feature is it's strictly for JPEGs. Tony Pags, no. This might be a meme. Uh, you can use it in RAW, but I think you need uh, the NX Studio, uh, NX Studio mm -hmm. software, the Nikon NX Studio mm -hmm. software, to yeah. to to uh, see it in RAW, and then you can, I believe you can switch it. You can invoke it, and you can you can turn it off. So the skin softening feature is pretty cool because it will isolate um, just the skin, the, f the flesh of the face, but it will leave the eyes. Sharp. There we go. There we go. It's so oh, I see it now. Yeah. See it now. Yeah. So, okay, kids, <laughs> yeah. We're going to make you guys, make you guys very, very nauseous. nauseous, but, and I lost it. I lost it again. Oh, it's so, All right, it's I so think wiggly. I have a bad cable, it's guys. So, it's so it's okay. I think I have a bad cable. It's okay, but um, it's there. Yeah. I see um, it now. Yeah. So it's there um, on NRAW. So what you can, what, you can do, do is you can put it on 4K oh, right. 120. And we do the Super Jane style because that's how we do it. In things. RAW. Yeah. Oh, you just kind of, oh. Oh, oh yeah. check up the. Yeah. There you go. Uh, give me a non reflection. Come on. Angle you incidence, had it, you had angle it. reflection. There, uh. <laughs> <laughs> super pro. Oh, my God. There we go. Uh, super pro. Super pro. Everything backwards. There he is. You see the 120 up above? Yeah. So. It's a 4.1K, so it's a little bit larger than 4K. The beauty of shooting so in raw so is sorry, that uh, <laughs> we say that you can shoot either, you know, usually, usually your uh, timeline is UHD, 4K UHD, but sometimes there's a uh, other, um, um, uh, like a DCI, I think, uh, is another 
um, aspect ratio, you can shoot for DCI both in 4K, 4.1K, or the 8.3K. So you can have that longer, wider aspect ratio, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. All right, about let's wake you guys up a little bit. There's, yeah. there's a couple okay. of autofocus <laughs> questions here. So is autofocus the same as the Z9? And there's also, when do we see airplane tracking mode, which is in the Z8, but not the Z9 currently? So I guess those kind of go together a little bit. You know what? For all intents and purposes, yes. The performance of the autofocus on the Z8 is exactly like the Z9. That's never happened before. Usually the, the flagship is the best, best, best autofocusing system. Here it's the exact same. And as far as the airplane detection goes, there is airplane detection on the Z9 as well. Uh, but what we did on the Z8 is we allowed you to separate it completely. So you can, with the Z9, it's with all the other vehicles, motorbikes, trains, oh. cars. But in the Z8, we allowed you to separate just for planes. Oh, okay. And it'll even detect the cockpit of the plane if it can. Oh, yeah. That's very yeah. handy. Uh, <laughs> notice there's a skin softening feature. Is it strictly for JPEGs? As I understand, oh yeah, I already, yeah. I already. While you were doing that, I addressed that. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't pay attention. to you. <laughs> I'm ahead of you here. Uh, so, what is the difference between shooting in RAW and shooting in log? Why would you use one over the other? Oh wow. Uh, so th those are not two separate things. You can actually shoot in log in RAW. So when you're shooting in RAW, uh, you can pick between two tone modes. Uh, either standard, uh, actually, sure, sorry, yeah, uh, there, there, there's a different tone modes, so you can, you can, you can, was, you can layer them on top of one another. <laughs> that was just adorable. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, guys, yeah. don't forget to like, this is how we get these guys to come back here for every launch, so <laughs> don't forget to throw, it's free, it's easy, Mark needs these likes to feel better about himself, <laughs> no, so right. please, please just, just hit like. Wakes um, up. We do, we, we divide it by four anyways, the likes, so. <laughs> So, I mean, I think it's interesting where we're looking at in this camera, right? So you have the Z7 II, same resolution, different sensor. We're talking about a mechanical shutter, slower readout. Then you got Z8, stack sensor, uh, easier price point, probably the lowest price point for a stack sensor that's full frame in the market right now currently. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Z9, which is on, just on steroids. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I've been using the Z9 for over a year, and every time I pick it up, it just keeps getting better and better to me, especially with the firmware updates. Yeah. And I think that's kind of reassurance of the Z8 as well as... This is where it's starting. Yes. Yeah. Are we looking at firmware updates or? Yeah. Uh, well, just the say Z... it. Just say it. Just yeah. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> We've shown we can do it. So where the Z8 starts is where the Z9 ended. The Z9 is on firmware 3.0. The Z8 effectively inherits all the features of the Z9 up to and including firmware 3.0. So all those things like high res zoom that we put in there, all the raw features that we put in there, uh, the Z8 starts at that point. Yeah. Have you been using the video at all? Have you been getting no. into it? You've just been in stills, right? <laughs> just stills. Just banging away at those raw yeah. files. How do you yeah. like the HE Star raw? Can, uh, do you, yeah, I know, right? Mm -hmm. I know. I know. <laughs> it's the same raw, but half the size. You're like, <laughs> what have I been shooting all this time? Yeah. You can't even tell like the difference. It, the, the image quality is that good. Yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. And you did flash work as well, I believe. Yeah. You know, between the two, you were doing you know, ambient light and flash work. How did you like uh, working with both those? workflows um on the z8 um because i know i know the uh some people are going to mention too that there's no uh Flash pc mode. sync oh, on yeah, the z8 so that's another difference so if, for people that are working in the studio there's no pc sync on the z8 there is one on the z9 you know what it's actually interesting you mentioned that because i now think about it i haven't actually used a pc board in a long time in the studio obviously right. everything is all all radio and i think a lot of people don't at this point in time right, yeah. right. and if you do you can just get a shoe adapter yeah. Not a big deal. Um, I did make a thing out of that. I was like, I love my sync port because sometimes I pull out my old <laughs> Speedatrons. <laughs> right. And I like to just use, and I use a lot of weird, look at this shelving. I use a lot of weird stuff and it mixes together. I like having right. a sync port, but you're talking about a dramatically lower price point and buying just a few dollars of a sync port adapter. I'm okay with it. Um, the, the one thing I do with my Z9 that, I, that you can do on the Z8 is the internal function buttons. The top one I have programmed to kill my strobe. So, Without even taking the camera off my face, I can adjust for ambient light when I squeeze that button, kill the strobe, then go back to an exposure for the strobe. And without even dropping the camera, I'm getting two styles of shots really, really fast. I'm working faster than I ever had before just by able to squeeze a button in the grip while I'm shooting. So I've been like really, really excited about it. It's the dumbest little things that make us no, happy. No, 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 no. You, it's, it's, good things sorry to interrupt yeah, you, sir. I'm really so sorry. I Please have the mic. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cordial. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was just going to say, you. no, everything you mentioned, I agree with Seth, like the, 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 the function buttons and all. No, go ahead. No, all I was actually was going to echo um, Seth's 
uh, uh, what, what he was talking about in respect to using Flash. Um, Especially when we use, I've forgotten the name of the adapter, the WR. Oh, um, yeah, WR11A. Just yeah. rolls off the yeah. tongue. Amazing. Right, exactly. <laughs> I just know it as a flash trigger. Um, I'm very used to sort of having a trigger on top of the camera and sort yes. of doing all this. It's really, really handy having an attachment that converts the camera into a trigger for mm. your flashes. So you're, like you said, you have all these custom buttons and you're looking through the viewfinder and you're customizing everything it's almost like you're inside the computer yes. inside the camera doing all these things um changing all your settings and taking photos coming back out without having to take the camera well that's kind of what i usually say about dslr versus mirrorless dslr to me when i was working in dslr forever was being inside the lens then when you go to mirrorless you're inside the sensor you're inside yeah. the image and yeah. that's really changed my workflow and my habits and just my end goal a lot of times i didn't even realize the shot i was going after till i start working with it more in the sensor. It's really interesting how the tools uh, shape your next habits and your next philosophy of the next exactly. shot. Right. And I think giving more and more capabilities in hand, like we all have these days, is just mind blown what we can yeah. get, get across. Um, I, I did want to bring up this one. Uh, oh, I just, I lost Skin it. softening. No, yeah. this one. So the trend seems to be going full electronic shutter. Yeah. Now, can you explain the main advantage of discontinuing a mechanical shutter? And I'm, I'm going to say physically, there's no physical shutter count. There's no mechanical shutter count anymore on a camera where something can, if that's physically a moving uh, plane of blades going at 8,000th of a second, that'll explode on you after a few million shots. I don't care what brand camera you have. Yeah. Physics are physics and materials are materials. Yeah. It'll, it will fail at some point. Yeah. That's one thing, but also the camera never gets shocked. There's yeah. nothing to shock the camera while you're in slower shutter speeds. There's also the fact that nothing's ever blocking that sensor anymore which means no more blackout. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, is there, is there, am I missing anything? There's one more thing. Uh, there's higher shutter speeds you can oh. accomplish. So the speed that the mechanical shutter, we could never get it to advance higher than one eight thousandth of a second. And when you're shooting at sunny 16, one eight thousandth of a second, I think if you have 64 ISO, you could still compensate for a 1.4 lens. But now that we have these 1.2s, you, and you only have a 1-8000 shutter, you're probably going to have to either close your aperture or put on some kind of filter on the front. Now, with the one thirty two thousandth of a second, you can actually compensate for those weird, you know, 1.2 lenses in bright sunlight. Yeah. So as we start making these brighter lenses, it just stands to reason that we have a faster shutter now, thanks to the electronic shutter. But I think ultimately what you're asking for is there is there any disadvantages of removing the mechanical shutter? The way I see it as a representative, and I've been talking to a lot of engineers, really the answer is no. I think it's just probably a comfort level that people don't understand. They probably think that there's an inherent value to the mechanical shutter. It, there's actually value to remove it altogether. As you said, all those things of removing the vibrations, number one, uh, the sound, number two. Um, and really the only way we're able to do that with the Z9 and the Z8 was because they use the dyad of the stack sensor and the... Uh, the XSpeed 7 processor. So it's those two components that allow the readout speed to be so fast, that's why they call it stack sensor, uh, that we can remove the mechanical shutter altogether. It's all, I talked to the engineer, it's all mathematics. It's basically the same capabilities of a mechanical shutter at that point, same rolling shutter capabilities. So at that point, there's no point, purpose in having it. Yeah. The only thing that is a drawback is the sound of it. Some people are contentious about it sounds like a, like a, Boy, you know. But, yeah, you know. I get it. I get it. But it's it's um you're also getting faster frame rates when you're doing stills with electronic shutter. But it, there's there's a, also a lot too where it's just like manufacturing things like that where there's not some crazy tiny little mechanical yeah. part they have to produce and stuff like that. Also, you have to remember it, we're finally up to the point where we have electronic shutter that doesn't need mechanical because the readout speeds are so fast. Yeah. Previously, when you had electronic shutter in some cameras, the readout mm -hmm. speed was so slow compared to the mechanical shutter that if you panned, things got wonky. If you were shooting somebody playing tennis, that ball became an egg. You know, there was just things that were happening with motion because of the slow readout of the electronic the shutter, shutter yeah. that the mechanical made up for it. Now yeah. it's fast enough. So what, <laughs> why? <laughs> uh, I didn't really understand you. Uh, sorry, I was I was reading the questions there. I, but <laughs> my train of thought went to something else. I did want to mention one thing. There's a, there is a drawback sometimes with the electronic shutter, um, and that's something that um, is inherent to electronic shutters. The uh, sometimes if you're 
photographing boards that are electronic boards, the refresh rate can cause a banding. Mm. Um, so we resolve that by using the capabilities of the electronic shutter itself. So in the in the firmware update of the Z9 and when the Z8 ships, you can actually dial in these very, very specific shutter speeds. Yeah, like 0.68, one, yeah. 0.39. Exactly. Yeah. So that you can take away that banding. So it's a phenomenon just to electronic shutters, but we created a solution for it in the firmware update and now with the Z8. So you can dial in a very specific weird uh, shutter speed. Has electronic shutter been like nice during street photography where it's just completely silent? Has that been anything for you? That's... <clears throat> So it's amazing because no one knows that a photograph has been taken. Even sometimes you don't even know the photograph is taken. <laughs> and I'm being honest because you think, did I take that picture? Let me just check. Let me just check. And you're like, yeah, it took like five. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's not even just in that. It's shooting a wedding. And this oh, is yeah. in reference to, to the Z9 because um, I haven't actually done that with a Z8 yet. But um, it's it's so good because half the time, most people actually, I think this is the little disadvantage. You're taking a portrait of someone and they don't hear anything. So they don't have anything to kind of, you know, to get some sort of feedback to tell them that the photograph hasn't been taken. And so they feel very creeped out when you're like, okay, I've taken the photo. And they're thinking, yeah. when? So you know what? I ran into that, but then I'm, this sounds so stupid, but I, the younger my subjects are, the less they care about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's really, it's really wild because their phones don't do that. Yeah. You know, they don't even think of it as a confirmation anymore. They haven't grown up with that habit that we right, grew up with. Right. And not for nothing when I'm using strobe, uh, I think if a strobe hit and you didn't hear a shutter, it still took a shot. Like, I think you kind of got the yeah, idea. Yeah, you get the strobe yeah, hit. Right. Right. But, but oh. with ambient, it's different, but I'll, I will tell you that there are indicators, uh, audible indicators. You can make the volume louder for the yeah. shutter if you want. Yeah. And you can also see visual indicators. So I know this is a blackout free viewfinder, but you can actually put in a fake blackout to make it <laughs> seem like it's a DSLR so that it blacks out when you take a picture. So but it gives you a visual indicator. On top of that, what I really like about it is that a lot of cameras have the speaker like to the corner and it's blasting this way. This, the speaker is right under the EVF and it's banging into my cheekbone. I have it dialed all the way down in volume. Only I can hear when I take a shot but no one else does. So my confirmation's still there audibly, but it, because of the speaker placement, it's a dumb little quality of life thing, but that's kind of like what's so great about really good design yeah. is, is little things like that, you know? Can I mention another one of your life hacks is that, uh, isn't it so that you've actually put on a pair of headphones yeah. into the side and you can hear the shutter sound through the headphone jack. Yeah. So if you didn't uh, want anybody else to hear it and be really discreet, but still have the feed, the audible feedback, you can put your headphones into here and, and listen to the shutter sound. One more thing I'll say about the shutter, <laughs> while I'm at it, I'm just jamming all these things in here, is uh, um, when it comes to long exposures, you can, ah, you know what, I won't. All right, let's, <laughs> let's get moving on to this. Let's get moving on to this. So can you power the cam can you power the camera through the USB C port or only for charging the battery? And there's actually two USB C ports on this camera, which is kind of a first, right? One's just for power delivery, oh, another one is for communication. Yeah, communication, yeah. So I'm gonna say you're covered on USB C ports, especially if you put the grip on it, you get three <laughs> USB C ports. It's very valuable. And one more thing it's valuable for is that USB C communication port. Uh, we this is the first camera that we have allow it to be uh, RJ45 as well. So if you you know here at Adorama you buy yourself a USB to RJ45, it will turn on all the network menus, so you can use FTP just like you did uh, in the. In you can the make it an Ethernet port, kids. Okay. Yes, you can I, just want, <laughs> yes. I do love this question about any new shutter sounds coming because I've been curious about that, and I'm curious to you all, like what would you like to hear? I think it should be programmable. I think it should be like a yelping or something. <laughs> you should just be able to program it. I just want my mom. I want, I want my mom saying the word "booby." So like "booby," "booby," you know, like I should be able to program it. That's what I'm just saying. I think that'd be great. That's such a neat feature. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's. I think we're in an age where like. You can't just pick up someone's camera and use it because everyone customizes it so heavily yeah, yeah. that you're like, wait, what button did you program to this? It says wipe out, but now it's doing everything else. So I think it's another thing you can customize. It's right? been proving it, it can be done. Some people hacked it before and they put cat sounds on it in, uh, in Japan. <laughs> so that's been done when the, when the Z9 came out. It did. It had cat oh, meows. Yeah. So this is a question. Uh, will future firmware updates for the Z8 and the Z9 be released at the same time? So because they're basically identical, the firmware is going to uh, be identical? I can't, I can't really disclose when those are coming out. So I think we'll just move on from that, but uh, Damn. yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're always working on new firmware there updates. There you go, yeah. boy. I knew you had the press release version <laughs> yeah. of that. Yes. All right. so, 
But I mean, overall, the 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 two USB C ports. Just so you guys can follow this, it's not just that. Let's say you're someone that's doing filmmaking and you put it on something with a, a follow focus or something that needs communication mm -hmm. from a USB port, but you still want power. The other one becomes a power port so while you have communication to something like a gimbal. So you're you. It's future going. It's going future ready. So for whatever, yeah. everything's yeah. going USB C more and more and more. An extra port can't hurt with whatever accessories get dreamt up out there as we go forward in this industry. Who would have thought we're doing what we're doing now with this stuff? Yeah, I was in that predicament the other day. We wanted, we had a Z9 and we wanted to power it, but also at the same time use the MCN10. We couldn't. With the Z8, we could do that because we have the two USBs. Um, <laughs> and then one thing I mentioned right up at the top, somebody was asking is if this is a small rig uh, cage. Yes, it is. This is a small rig cage. So small rig already has a cage ready for the Z8. They always have something ready yeah. on releases. They're, they're release, fast. Yeah. They are fast. I had a Z9 with... cage before the Z9. Well, we I'm not, not, yeah, not even kidding. kidding. Inception. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, we already answered the question about the 18D batteries. It's it's not going to be able to take the 18D battery in the uh, in the grip. So you're looking at a bunch of ENL 15C batteries, okay? Uh, as far as high-speed sync, I've been using high-speed sync with this. I don't know if either of you guys have been using high-speed sync for strobe. I haven't had any issues with high-speed sync yeah. on this camera. I thought that was the first thing I was going to problems with, with it being only electronic shutter. Awesome. Yeah, it just fair. works. Yeah, I've used it a lot on the 9, but not on the 8 yet. Yeah, I haven't touched the 8 for high-speed sync. I'll be honest about that. I know Joe McNally was testing out the high-speed sync in our video. If you haven't watched that video, it's on this channel. Joe McNally, the legend at a jazz club with me and this guy and uh we were shooting in some super low light i mean he was he was in some challenging conditions and it came out pretty well so and, and the whole video was shot on z8 with our own fernando martinez can i plug hey. fernando because i learned something from him at that shoot thank you fernando you learned Fernan something from fernando. i learned something from fernando because fernando was holding the cage like this and he was doing the bts and he wanted to be able to start and stop the video with his left hand. So he was asking, is there any way to program a button on this side of the camera to start and stop recording? Because he was he didn't want to let go of that and, and activate it through here. So as I found out during the shoot, yes, you can. You can program the function three button, which is basically the lock key on the left-hand side of the camera to be your record button. So that's a new feature. The Z9 didn't even have that. And as you're holding it here, you can take your left hand and start and stop the recording. I thought that was a nifty little piece. Uh, so little things, right? Yeah, very little, little things, things that like make that. yeah well, quality of life <laughs> life hacks. Yeah. So the USB C port, I think one of the biggest questions that we've had, especially from filmmakers, are can, will you be able to use external memory with the USB C port? Mm. Uh, we, mm. Some other cameras do. A lot of them are smaller sensors, yeah. and I, I started learning that it's a lot of data to get through USB C port. Eight K raw through a USB C port onto an SSD card is very very challenging, actually. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe at this point. Uh, well, I, I don't think we we have that capability. The only thing is the HDMI port, as uh, as far as I know right now. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of Micro Four Thirds cameras do it. Um, we are only now seeing some full frame cameras offer that in certain resolutions and formats, not all. So there's something with USB C that's a bit of a bottleneck, I think. But uh, maybe we don't know, right? I no one saw 8.3K coming out of this thing when it was launched. You guys did not have that when it was launched. That was a firmware update in firmware. That was a firmware yes. update. So we don't yeah. know. We really don't know, but it's 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 i gotta say it's really weird what nikon decides to put in there with a firmware update You're like what what is this feature starlight huh <laughs> you know like you don't even think of these things you know yeah. but you've been using starlight in all these night modes huh a little bit yeah, yeah. you want to talk think, about that well, you've been i, using I use it them too. When I'm, whenever i'm photographing weddings in a dark in a dark reception room starlight all the time. what is the mode exactly for you like what is it doing i mean especially when i'm because i'm using a lot of off-camera flash right um it just allows you kind of Maybe I'm not using it properly, but for me, it works. I'm able to see a lot more detail, a lot more things that you would not ordinarily be able to see with your natural eyes. So, um, yeah, it's very, 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 very handy. Um, most times you're in a reception, it's really dark and you want to light something. You don't want to, are you going to, are you going to see what you need to focus on? Huh. You're in a starlight mode and you're like, ah, oh, that's what it is. That's, that's where the, that's how I can make my composition. And I got to try this. That's, a, that's kind of why, because you don't even think because the name is Starlight Mode. You're like, ah, that's for the landscape, it was, guys. It was just <laughs> something, and it was fun. It was weird. It was something that I discovered by mistake because I was looking for a, for a way to use the camera and use a speed light at the same time without having to dial up the exposure to see things. And then I just discovered Starlight Mode. I was like, oh, it actually works. Great. <laughs> 
Uh, this one's uh, pretty interesting. So now a real question. Oh, real question. You ready for this, Mark? Start yeah. sweating. <laughs> Are there any forced crops on any video resolutions or frame rates? Also, the new digital zoom feature, is that the full sensor or is it just a smooth crop? Uh, is there any forced crops? The answer to that is no, for the most <laughs> part. Uh, you know what? If you want 8K60, full frame. If you want 4K oh 120, so full frame. <laughs> If you what do you what do you, you want raw full frame bring it just make it rain full frame look we don't have to we don't have to do any okay. crops if we want to crop we put it in intentionally so all this that's the power of the X Speed 7 processor I tell you because oh, no, that that's the compromise on all the other cameras the compromise is if you want all these fast resolutions and high frame rates you have to crop and that's just so uh, restricting. See, you're not going to get Mark unhinged on Nikon's channel. You get, he lets loose in the clubhouse up here. If I got Fernando laughing, I know it was a good time. So. <laughs> um, but what I will say is like, it's been super impressive with the specs and it being full frame. But what's actually impressive is that there's not really a caveat of it so melting in your frame. hand. Yeah. That was one of the things is that we, I really put it through a lot over the like year and a half. And there was really, I, I haven't seen an overheat warning yet. I will tell you, there is a heat. Okay, so there's on the Z8. I was talking about the Z9. I'm sorry. I was talking about the Z9. So the Z9 can record pretty much anything at uh, two hours and five minutes. So 125 minutes. The difference between the Z8 is because we're using different materials in here. That's the reduction in 30% size and weight. We went to a combination of magnesium alloy on the front plate, but everything else is uh, Cerebo type uh, carbon fiber plastic type of material. So that's the reason for the weight loss, but also it's a smaller body. So the heat sink is not that high. So bottom line is almost every resolution you can still achieve two hours and five minutes with the exception of 8K 30. So once you start doing 8K, the maximum that you can do is 90 minutes. There's a 90 minutes um, if you put on the high temperature mode and then if you keep it regular, it'll be about 60 minutes. Oh, and I also want to address something because a lot of the reviews were talking about the cards getting super hot and that could be an issue. You guys also have to realize that's on the card. Yeah. Some cards have different casings or different heat dissipation. Uh, Angel Bird went out of their way to really focus on their heat dissipation on the on the casing of the card and some other pro end cards. And that's not one of the things you pay for in higher memory cards. It's not just the speed, stability, and all that. Sometimes it's little tiny build quality things like heat dissipation. So keep that in mind. There was something I really wanted to pull up and I lost it now. Uh, uh, oh, this, the hey, so um, y there's now a new format in the Z8. I don't know if you call it Heif, Heif, whatever. Call it Heif. It's a more Heif. efficient JPEG, yeah. am I right? Uh, it's a 10 bit. It? Use it? So, yeah. Not yet. No, have you used it? Nope. Nope, okay. <laughs> yeah, so really the JPEG is 8 bit, the Heif is 10 bit, so it's a broader tonality, but oh, yeah. we actually have, there's a switch now in the Z8 that will change both the raw and the either height to the 10 bits. So you flick a switch and it becomes HLG, and that'll change both your raw and your, it'll change the JPEG into height. If you want to uh, shoot in standard, you'll shoot in regular raw or JPEG. So the difference is the HLG mode will activate this 10 bit and if you're showing it on a TV, for example, and it's an HLG TV, you can see those broader ranges or like a PQ compatible uh, uh, monitor. So it has to be a certain range for you to see the results, but effectively the Hyfe can potentially give you broader dynamic range uh, depending on where you display it though. So you have to have the proper display. I actually have a question. Yes. <laughs> when you're shooting, like I'm kind of obsessed with being able to take photos at 120 photos per second. Do it in that format. Oh wow, the the the, the eleven megapixel JPEGs. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's a restriction for that. So if if I um, do That's it in real time right now, so if I put it into HLG, um, can I put it? So here's the button, and then oh oh, you can only do it. Uh, you can't uh, do it in 120. Okay. Sorry, I had you to ask. Have, <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good question. I don't think yeah. anybody would have thought about that. Yeah, yeah, you've been right. doing it a I lot. love 120 photos per second. And mm -hmm. I love that you're able to do that. You can get so many details of wildlife. It's only JPEG. So is 11 megapixels okay? Like, are you yeah, all right yeah, with that? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And you can turn that into a 6K video. Mm -hmm. And I've been getting all those details of like bees in flight and all sorts of like hummingbirds in flight. And then you can do all sorts of merging with the photos. And I have a lot of fun at 120 photos per yeah, second. Yeah, you sound like it. You have a, <laughs> in your, it. your skull is on fire it. right now. Insane. <laughs> insane <laughs> have you been doing anything with the 120 no i mean i'm trying to think 
Why would I use 120 frames? A so when the when the Z9 got first got announced and they told us about this 120 frame, it's like 11 megabytes. I was like, oh, that's just a party trick. Like they're just trying to sell something. <laughs> you know. But then I tried and I was like, I could see applications for this. Like just trying to pinpoint something in a motion, something for referential. Like let's say instead of using a high speed uh, video camera you were able to do something to show like the impact of something at the time of the impact just for like referential stuff. Yeah. But the 11 megapixels is a good 11 megapixels. I don't know how else to put it's it. Beautiful. It's not a. It's not what, what you think in your head. Like, oh, it's an 11. Like, no, it's a good 11 megapixels. Yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. Somebody in that chat, that Z9, could probably tell us a well, little bit better. I have a fun story about do that. Do it. Live your so truth. So <laughs> I was doing a whole bunch of um, work on native bees down in Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really interesting because I was doing the 120 photos per second. And these are bees that haven't been photographed too much and not many documentation on any of these bees. So I'm right at this hive. And um, I was working with a bee biologist that was teaching people how to make the beehive so they could like help protect the pollinators and the Amazon. And I'm doing burst 120 photos per second to see how they're flying into the beehive. And the 120 photos per second revealed that they had this, they were fighting with each other when the beehive was moved from the intro hive to like a main hive. So they were fighting with each other, but you couldn't see it with your eye. You could only see it with 120 photos per second in the macro lens. So the camera revealed behavior to this bee biologist that there was aggression when they were moving into what? their beehive. So he ended up starting to teach people that they needed to move the beehives in, into the bigger hives during the morning and the evening when bees are less aggressive. So in a way, that technology helped protect the bees in the Amazon. It's a really cool story. So there's all sorts wow. of applications because wow. I like using my cameras to discover and connect deeper with wildlife mm. and to kind of unlock some secrets. So that 120 photos per second, it really helped me kind of dig into that behavior and understand, and it was undocumented behavior. That, well, you know what's interesting about the 120 that I don't think people get is a lot of people go like, oh, it's just like video, but it's it's not because of video, you're at the mercy of the frame rate for the shutter speed. But yes. with the 120 as a still, you can do a thousandth of a second. You can do faster frame rates, uh, faster shutter speeds that will freeze the action mm -hmm. for each of those frames. If you did this with video, you'd have like half framey blurry weirdness mm -hmm. because that's what video is. So that's kind of the advantage of the 120 to me. Uh, shooting zombies in a studio. I don't really see that too much. One day, maybe I'll do a projectile vomit in 120. Mm. And it's... And, uh, <laughs> I love Good. your face when I say this stuff. But, but Christy said it, it's also higher resolution. So on the video, you can only get 4K. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, you could get, what, 6.5K, you said? Something like that. Yeah, so it's higher resolution, too. Right. And also, I think we haven't mentioned that there's still ProRes internal on these things. ProRes internal. Oh, yes, correct. Yes, so... There's both ProRes RAW as well as ProRes 422 like HQ. ProRes, really? <laughs> yeah, so ProRes RAW, I mean, depending on, because here's the, here's the deal. Depending on your workflow, what editing suite you use, uh, the NRAW is compatible with two at this moment. It's Grass Valley, Idius, and there's also um, <laughs> Blackmagic. Um... Yeah, the, the, the Blackmagic uh, suite, which is... Come on, Seth. Uh, I'm paying attention. Fernando. To I was like, <laughs> pardon? B raw. No, 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 no. The suite. Oh, da Vinci. Da Vinci. Da Vinci Resolve. Oh. Oh. Da Vinci Resolve 18. <laughs> we're all we're all using Da Vinci here, by so, the way. We're yes. So uh, if you want to use NRAW, Da Vinci uh, as well as Idius will be able to do the NRAW. But if you're using something like Final Cut, then you can use uh, the ProRes RAW. But uh, a good in between is if you don't want to go all the way to RAW. And, and have to deal with that, you can shoot ProRes RAW 422HQ 10 bit. So that 422 is the good subsampling rate because it's not like 420 like the other ones. Okay, this is a question that's uh, kind of pertinent to our little community because we talk about it a lot. Brad's a, uh, an OG of our community. Because we're not seeing mechanical shutters anymore, but so, shut so shutter counts kind of go away, but there's still like wear and tear on a sensor over time. Will we see sensor hours or, uh, or hours in a camera as a meter one day? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, not, not that I've seen. So it's, it's really weird because on the Z6 II and Z7 II, I don't know how they calculated this, but that has a mechanical shutter, but I took off the mechanical shutter and just went electronic and it still counted it as an iteration of a shutter. So mm. I don't trust those anymore. And okay. it's, it's become irrelevant with the Z8 and the Z, Z9. That's fair. And guys, we got 250 of you watching and only 96 likes. Uh, come on. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> least on. you could do. The come least on. you could do. Everybody, hold on. Stop. Everybody, right now, like. <laughs> I tell you what. So Hank is actually asking, how will the supply be 
Uh, was it be- will it be better than for my Z9? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, because I'm not an icon and I can't get in trouble. I'm just going to say, I think it's going to be pretty good. I'm just, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we can say uh, it, it is much, we are going to have much more inventory than we did the 9. Much more inventory. I mean, I'm not going to make this gesture, but I mean, I'm just going to say that we have much more inventory and the shipping date is end of May. So think about it that way. There was, we've had releases over the years that were three months till shipping, pre-order, and then three months. Like, they're saying the end of May, so you're talking a couple of weeks here. This is unbelievable. I think it's, this is like a win all around for this camera. It's a lower price point flagship, smaller, and it's actually going to be available. So don't forget to check out the link for the pre-order. And also, guys, if you're someone that's got like a D850 and you're thinking, ah, uh, there's also trade-ins at Adorama. Think about it. So if you're looking to upgrade, that's a good way to upgrade. Check out all the links. Uh, there's, they got to be in. They've they've worked on this description for like three weeks in this uh, on this video. So there's got to be links down below. Um, is there anything that we didn't touch on? Uh, I was just gonna say that. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of speculation here. I wish I could a- answer your speculation. I, I I sorry, I just can't. But in terms of um of the uh, the availability, uh, like you're right, Seth. It's it's exciting that we just announced the camera and it'll be available. Uh, really at the end of this month. I just wanted to mention that we are, we, you can buy it body alone, but you can also buy a kit with the 24 to 120. So the 24 to 120 is an F4. <laughs> it is an S line lens. And this is the first real camera that we're kidding with that really, really, really good lens. And I think it's, it's always been an a la carte lens, but yeah. we're going right off the bat and kidding it with the Z8. Yeah, and if you're wondering about that 24 to 120 F4, my Instagram is probably 80% that lens. Uh, it's been my go-to lens forever. Fernando, am I right? Yeah. See, he, he's always <laughs> when I, he just knows that's what I'm bringing with me. Because now with this version, just just so I can harp on a little bit, even at 120, you're still at under a foot of like uh, like you're so close focus with it. Even at 120 millimeters, it gets almost macroy. So I never really feel a need in a studio to really take it off unless I'm looking for a specific characteristic in a glass. So the 24 to 120 f4 is probably one of the best all-around lenses I've ever used. So. That's coming from me. Take it as you will. All right. Uh, how's the autofocus tracking? It's as good as the Z9. It's the same, same autofocus. Guys. Somebody asked Oh, there we are. There we go. Yay! Oh my goodness, my favorite comment during okay. that time. <laughs> Blame Fernando. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's all right? We got to see all your comments while that went down. In my defense... It was great. It was very interesting. We're all <laughs> in, in my defense, guys, this space was torn apart from doing Facebook Live, then made it an Instagram Live, and now I didn't put together this panel. So there is a ball of cables here. <laughs> <laughs> that are I'm surviving off of. So I apologize for the technical issues. You can blame me. Don't blame Fernando. Uh, I'll take it out on him later. Don't worry. So <laughs> it was a quick fix, though. That was like 30 seconds. Thank you so much. Uh, so Surprise. thanks. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, any any difference between the S and non S lenses? What's the difference? Uh, a lot of the difference comes down. To, it's a very specific formula that uh, we have at Nikon in terms of what makes an S line lens. You know, typically the variable apertures will not be an S-line lens. It's usually a, a fixed aperture for zooms. Uh, and it's a certain build quality in terms of the weather ceiling, um, but also uh, the, the resolving capabilities. So uh, it's it usually comes down to that, the resolving capability of the lenses, uh, whether it meets our internal standards and as well as the build quality and the coatings that we put on the front to make it more durable. So this this one's interesting. Uh, I heard Stack Sense reduced dynamic range and... I heard this same thing, but having used the Z9 for a year and looking at, I don't know, Christie's pictures right here, <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Like, I, I hear it. 
I've heard this this idea, but I'm as in use, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I think if you start splitting hairs and if you go to DxO Mark, they actually rate the Z7 II with a higher rating and stuff like that. There might be some truth to that because there's more heat that's generated with the stack sensors, but um, I think that's a lot of that is compensated with the processing. So I wouldn't worry about it at all. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. That was my first. Uh, you, you guys know Ricci, right? I talk to Ricci all the time, and I'm like, I don't know, man. It's an electronic shutter. An electronic shutter always means uh, small damn range. Mm. I, I, I got to be telling you, I pushed yeah. the hell out of this thing in so many weird situations, lighting wise. And I'm never going like, oh, why is my range not? That? I've never said it. Mm. And yeah. I'm not just saying that. I mean, I mean you I, can it really... see Christie's pictures from those. Uh, yeah, right there. You know, it's, it's, uh, you can see the highlights to the shadows and everything in between. And, you know, I think when you shoot raw, we get 12 stops of dynamic range and you can really push the shadows and highlights. Oh, one thing I will mention is um, we're going to have a firmware update for this. For which one? The Z8. The Z8 already? Oh, yes, it was very quiet when we when we did the launch. We're not telling you when. It's coming in the future. But oh. what it will... <laughs> of it's coming in the future. What it will enable... <laughs> okay, we're seeing it now on the Adora Adorama live stream. Is two key features, all right? And that is... Cut the feed! No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, It'll probably cut out anyway. Don't worry. It'll probably cut on its own. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're we're going to have an auto capture feature as well as the ability to reduce the base ISO for N-Log. So happy videographers out there that uh, won't necessarily have to carry around a neutral density filter. We're going to be able to take that 800 base down a couple of stops. So um, this is going to be good news for the Z8. So like a 200 base ISO? Really? Instead of 800? That's awesome, actually. Mazel tough. That's nice. Yes, Good yes. job. Uh, so we don't know when that's happening, but that's happening. We already answered the USB-C question. No external recording to USB-C yet. We don't know if something will happen later. Um, and can you speak to the autofocus tracking? It's amazing how we get so caught up on autofocus tracking, but like in my experience, having used the Z9 since day one and with all the firmware updates and all the weird stuff I have to shoot for you guys, um, <laughs> it's been great. It's been great for me. Uh, I would not be using the camera or live in front of crowds, if it wasn't good. I have had no issues with it. Z8, same autofocus as Z9? Yes, and I think more for relative talk, you know, if you want to compare it with anything Z62, Z72, world uh, demonstrably better than oh, yeah. Z72 autofocusing system. But if you're coming from a DSLR, we finally reached a point where the subject tracking, I think we said is equivalent to the D6. So the D6, when you know the fo when the uh, subject is approaching, the refresh rate of the stack sensor is so fast that it can approximate like a D6 uh, contrast detect level focus uh, tracking. So I mean, uh, um, yeah, movement. So, but the tracking of where it is around the frame is much more sophisticated on a Z6 or on a Z8 and a Z9. So if you're coming from a DSLR, it's far more sophisticated and just as capable with the tracking. If you're coming from a Z62 or a Z72, demonstrably better. So, so fun fact, Christy was sharing with I, Christy just had oh, a Petrix article where she shot. I have a print of that. Would you let me <laughs> talk, sir? So um, I love you, Mark. Uh, Christy shot some tadpoles with the animal autofocus right here. And this was in Petpixel. I saw these images. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's always just like, oh, of course it's Christy. But then when you scroll over, there it is, tracking the little eyeball on a tadpole. Like it recognized the tadpole and where the eye was. You want to talk about and it? And we're talking like tiny, tiny tadpoles. Like I couldn't even see the eye. And when I was looking through the 50 millimeter and I was shocked. I was shocked to the point where I had to bring like an Atomos Ninja with me to get the electronic viewfinder shot <laughs> just to prove to people that it was catching the eye of the tadpole. Because usually with macro, I was always um, using focus peaking and just moving in and out. But um, you know, I think this was right after 2.0 for firmware updates. You, on were, the... you weren't supposed to show this because this is a hidden firmware feature for tadpole <laughs> detection. This was supposed to be hidden. <laughs> You're not supposed to show I just kids. remember going, oh my gosh, I can do macro work <laughs> and use eye tracking for, for ta I mean, it was, it was yeah. pretty phenomenal. It was so cool too. Cause when I was like photographing these tadpoles, I could see the heart of the tadpoles for the camera. And I'm going another way that photography is connecting us even deeper with wildlife. And it's become a tool of discovery, a tool of caring and a tool of sharing passion. I'm working with a whole bunch of people that are fighting to protect the boreal toad, which is Colorado's only spe mountain species of toad. 
And to be able to show how beautiful and precious it is, even from a tadpole phase, can help protect the species. You, you shot with a 50, right? <laughs> you can't see. And uh, they've got these unique identifiers, like our fingerprints and their bumps. And um, like, I'm so excited. It was, <laughs> I, I get so into it. You talk to me about like tadpoles or like pikas, and I get really. <laughs> what lens was it? This was the 50. I used the 50 because I was a little closer. Which 50 did you? I used the 50 macro, the Z50 um, macro. The little guy, right? Yeah, it's so nice. You got that really close focusing mm -hmm. distance, unlike the. The 105, the 105 was always my go-to, but for this specifically, I wanted to use the 50 because I was, I was much closer to my closer. subjects. Yes, Just closer. one more thing about yeah, um, AF tracking, um, and this, I was, this is, of course, this was obviously playing on the Z9. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's the same on the Z. Actually, it is on the ZA because I, I, I use it as well with you. Um, <laughs> this, this, um, this actually blew me away. <laughs> So I stuck on the, uh, I think it was the 85 1.2, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have used a 1.2 on many other cameras before, and it's hit or miss whether you're going to get the eyes in focus when you're shooting at 1.2. With this camera, I think every single shot was in focus, like all the eyes were in focus. And now I've used it at a wedding, not with this camera. That but the Z9, and that's why I'm saying I'm sure it's going to be the same. Um, at 1.2, with a couple moving on the dance floor, um, during their first dance, right? So, of course, it's low light, um, and of course, the kind of, the kind of images you get are really, but it's so comforting knowing that you have a camera that is so reliable when it comes at 1.2. So, that was one thing that really blew me, blew me away. I just thought I just threw it. No, 1.2 is razor thin. Yes. It is a nightmare. I don't normally do <laughs> anything below F2, okay. right? Because I'm I'm not sure I'm going to get what I want in focus. But most of the times, everything is... And if you follow my Instagram, you find that I shoot a lot of uh, things with very, very smaller apertures. But I thought, you know what? Let me try and you know get some of these really soft, dreamy focus. Um, and I did that. And I thought, wow, this is... I mean, obviously, you look in the camera, you <laughs> see it. But then you get back to your desk and you're looking at the photos and you're like, Photograph is in focus. Everyone her eyes are yeah. their eyes are in focus, and that was that. I think I think it's really oh, funny because I, over a decade I photographed weddings, and I haven't been doing it for almost a decade now. But you but were you were amazing. There was so many. There's been a couple of random opportunities where people have needed me last minute to cover, hmm. and I've gone in and I'm going, oh my gosh, with this new autofocus, it's like all of my shots, everything. It, it's getting so much easier, and I'm really like. When I heard about the sin skin softening, I was really curious about like, gosh, if I was a wedding photographer, that would be yeah. that would be the feature because it's like, you know, when people say, oh, your your camera makes me look so good. It's like mm -hmm. now it's got a little AI in it that yeah. is I'm, I'm curious more about this, I, even though do you use this. Do you think you're going to use skin I think softening? I will. In yes, I think I will. The more important question is, how do you feel when someone says, oh, your camera made me look great? <laughs> I tell them when next I come have dinner at your house and I love the meal, I'm gonna say your microwave is amazing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're so petty. You're so petty. I am. <laughs> hey, Brandon Wolfel, welcome to the chef. If you guys don't know, we've done plenty of videos of Brandon Wolf on, on the channel. If you guys want to search it out, welcome, Brandon. Um, yeah, I think honestly, you could talk forever about this camera. And if you have been hearing about the Z9 for the last year, you kind of get the idea of what the camera's capable of, right? Uh, now it's up to you guys if you want it in a smaller form factor, easier price point, and if it's for you, really. That's really what it's about. So uh, I think Nikon has come a long way from the inception of the Z system, and I think it's just really showing a strong foundation of where the technology can go from here. And if this is the flagships, trickle back, right? So I'm pretty interested to see what's going on in the future. Yeah, yeah. You know, let me just address one question from Luis Silva. Uh, he's asking about uh, any unique focusing tools. Uh, as Jide was talking, I was remembering his shoot because I was on it. He was actually using 3D tracking, I believe. Mm. But the 3D tracking on these cameras now, you can combine it with subject detection. So whereas in the past, 3D tracking has always just been a box and you don't, you focus it on an, any inanimate object and it'll track it. But if it detects a face, then it'll go from the 3D tracking spot and it'll 
directly revert to the, the eye. Yeah. So that is a combination of two features that we've never really had before, other than the Z9 and now in the Z8. So that's kind of a unique feature, I think, that's unique to Z8 and Z9, is that you can use that 3D tracking option, but then turn on and off the subject detection. So if you want it to detect subjects, and if it finds it in the frame, it'll go right to eye detection, and then if it doesn't detect a subject, you're right back to 3D tracking. So that's a, a cool uh, feature in there. All right, I'm seeing a bunch of, like, kind of negative stuff in here. So I'm going to address this one because I've heard it like, why has Nikon released a camera with 18 month old technology? Because it's still to date the best in class, even after 18 months. At the price point, you will not find a stacked full frame sensor putting out 8.3K 60 frames per second tilted internal raw video. You won't find 20 frames per second stack sensors at four, uh, at, at four grand right now. So it's kind of like, it's, it kind of gets under my skin a little bit when you guys say stuff like that just because it's 18 months old and somehow makes it uh, obsolete when it's still flying out there as a, as a leading class uh, camera. I mean, honestly, and the technology is still there. Yeah, you're right. Because the, the stack, the beauty about the stack sensor is that it has a fast refresh rate. The reason we're able to remove the physical shutter is because the the stack sensor is the uh, the readout is fast enough to remove the mechanical shutter altogether. There's no other camera that removed the mechanical shutter because none of them achieved that readout speed. So it's if it's still top of the, of the line, I mean, it's nothing needs to be fixed. I think a lot of people liked the capabilities that the Z9 brought. They just wanted it in a smaller, lighter package, and maybe as you said at the beginning, a little less expensive. Mm -hmm. So I think this this uh, uh, meets that. And you can't forget the last all the firmware updates that have happened over the last yeah, 18 yeah. months. The support has been amazing. The support yeah. has really been amazing to yeah. see. The platform really allows for constant development because it's so uh, so broad. Yeah, so, um, and then I'm going to just, uh, another one from the same person is, is not going to release a higher megapixel camera with good autofocus. Um, I'm just going to say, like, you have to kind of gauge where you trade off things. So when you go into higher megapixels, you end up, anytime you raise something as a spec, you trade off something else. When you put up higher resolution, then you trade off processing overhead, right? So now you got slower frames per second. You have bogging down in a buffer. You have space on card. You have heat issues. You have slower shutters because they have to take all that data and it's slower to process as it comes off the... So the fast readout speed comes from 45 megapixels. Right now, it's just so low res, 45 megapixels, <laughs> right? It's just... I, 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 Maybe they will. Maybe they'll put it out. But I think the megapixel conversation is more of a... Uh, per user rather than we need more megapixel. And I think really right now what's differentiating classes of camera are the type of sensor from non-backside illuminated to backside illuminated to stacked, non-stacked and things like that. So can I address that? Because I think uh, your man up there, John, is trying to ask the same question. Uh, the, is the sensor BSI and stacked? I see references for stacked CMOS, but no references to BSI. So BS, uh, sorry, stacked is implicitly BSI. There's no such thing as a stacked non-BSI. So anytime you see stacked, it's naturally BSI. That's probably why you never saw references to BSI. I should know because I did the copy for the <laughs> website. I took out reference to BSI because there's no point in putting BSI because it's already stacked. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Either way, I think we've kind of hit the mark on this one. It's been going a little while. So <laughs> Listen, guys, if you have any other questions and you're watching some playback, hit a comment down below. We'll do our best to answer it down there after the fact. I really want to thank all you guys for your time. This has been amazing. Do we, do we bow like in, in Broadway? We, like... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Please check out all the IGs in the description. <laughs> amazing work from everybody on this. Uh, everyone this side has been gracious enough for their oh, time. No, and thank you. So. And Fernando. And Fernando. Oh, thanks, yeah, Fernando. Fernando. Fernando for the laugh track. And I want to thank you guys for your time and joining us. Listen, we can... We always want to try to get you guys a point of source for reference for whatever you're doing out there to make better decisions for your gear. If you're not happy using the gear, you're not going to go create. And that's what Create No Matter What is about, is to get you guys to want to go do it with whatever's in your hands, okay? So if you guys need any resources, Adorama TV has it. Whether you want to learn about lighting, ambient light, you want to learn about video, audio, whatever, right here at Adorama TV. So go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell so you get notified when more videos come out like this. I guess that's pretty much it, right, guys? <laughs> yep. Can I hit this good. red button and get out of here alive? All right. <laughs> guys, Thanks, thank everyone. you guys so much. Thank you. Be good. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and that was awesome. Oh,